Though the dark clouds cover us and the violent storms assail, God seeks us out and protects us. God brings us to safe shelter of God's compassion. When we feel lost and alone, wondering who will save us, God reaches out in love, healing our wounds and transforming our lives. Thank God who loves us so much. Praise God who searches for us and brings us home. Amen.
Today's scripture comes from 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16 through 18. Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. This is a word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Happy Thanksgiving Sunday. 2020 has been a hard year for many of us. As we all know, it was the advent of a global pandemic, one that continues to claim lives all around the world. Not only that, 2020 was the year where the church had to do the unthinkable. It had to close its doors. The church all around the world is open every Sunday where the body of Christ can come, worship, fellowship, and serve. We've had to discover, rediscover what it means to be church in the midst of this pandemic, Keolumana UMC being no exception. Not only that, this year, 2020, was an election year, one of the most contentious in our nation's history. It continues to be contentious as the events unfold, even though the election is over. As we all know, the economy took a really big hit. Hawaii taking some of the biggest hits in our country. At some points, the unemployment rate was at 30%, the highest in the nation. The hardest hit industries were the hotel, tourism, and retail industries, the driving heart of the Hawaii economy. Life is completely altered as we know it, but I believe that is all the more reason why today's passage is so important. Paul, he gives three short pieces of advice at the end of a beautiful letter he writes to the church in Thessalonica. And all of these three pieces of advice perpetuate each other. They create one another. It's almost like a circle that continues on and on and on. He says, be joyful always. He's able to say that because he tells the church in Thessalonica that their faith is in Christ and not on their circumstances. You see, the church in Thessalonica was one of the first churches that were planted, and it is believed that this is one of the first epistles that Paul writes. He wants to encourage the church because they're facing harsh persecution by the surrounding Greek and Roman culture, where everywhere you would see signs that Caesar is Lord, Caesar is King. Paul wants to encourage this church to keep their faith in the midst of the contentious environment they find themselves in. He says, be joyful always, because throughout the book he talks about how in our pain and in our suffering, we can relate to the suffering that Christ went through, and we can have an understanding of Christ that we normally wouldn't be able to have. Then he says, pray continually. Now, in the New Testament, there's all different words for pray. This particular phrase is a, an umbrella term of prayer. It covers all different kinds of prayer. And what Paul is saying is continue to pray. Pray always. My pastor used to say to me, prayer is a Christian's response to everything. I'm reminded of Matthew chapter 7 where Jesus instructs his disciples on how to pray. He says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. He says, if someone's son asks for bread, would you give him a snake? Of course not. They would joyfully give what they ask for. You see, God is waiting for our prayer requests. God is waiting for our prayers. God wants to meet us and wants to hear what we are asking of God. So Paul is saying, with that in mind, Paul is saying, continue to pray. When you go through a hard time, when you go through a good time, continue to have that relationship with God and lift up everything in prayer. And finally, he says, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is Christ's will for you in Christ Jesus. That means to continue to give thanks no matter what. I used to be a children's pastor, and I remember every year during Vacation Bible School, before we started our program, I would have all the volunteers sit in a circle, and we would go around and we would share our joys and concerns, so anything we wanted to celebrate or any prayer requests. And as we went around in the circle, it became apparent to me everybody's understanding of when you should be thankful to God. 
One person said, you know, I'm so thankful to God because I forgot my umbrella, but as soon as I stepped out of my class to get to my other class, the rain stopped. So I'm so glad God stopped the rain so I wouldn't get wet. Another person said, well, I'm so thankful to God because I didn't study for my quiz, but God made it so the teacher would delay the quiz so I still have time to study. Another person said, I am so thankful because I went shopping with my mom and all the clothes were on sale. I'm so thankful God put all the clothes on sale for me. So uh, I, after a while, I just said, stop, you know, and I went to the first person that shared and I said, you know, if you stepped out and you got rain poured on you, would you still be thankful? And what's the other person? If you had not studied and you failed your quiz, would you be still thankful? If you went to the mall and you uh, discovered you couldn't afford anything, would you still be thankful? You see, when we design our worldview where we are the center and we just thank God for making things work out the way that we want, God is not actually God. We are God. We put ourselves in the center. But as disciples of Christ, we have an understanding that things don't always work out the way we want. But our joy and our hope is never on our circumstances. It's on what God has done for us through God's Son, Jesus Christ. Through the hope that we have in Christ, therefore we could be thankful because our circumstances could never change that. The church in Thessalonica was facing some really hard times and Paul could tell them to be thankful always no matter what, because he knew that their hope as a church was in Christ and that Christ has not abandoned them, Christ has not left them, and Christ was with them. He ends this by saying, this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. You see, all of these three things, very simple, be joyful, pray, be thankful, are things that perpetuate each other and all of these three things are God's will for today and for our whole lives. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for my health, I'm thankful for my family, and I'm thankful for this church. I hope all of us can look at Christ, can look at what Christ has done for us and be thankful. To look at all the blessings that we have, to not compare, to not be disgruntled, to always see the goodness of God in every situation and in doing so we are able to perpetuate being joyful being thankful and to continue and to continue to pray as you're celebrating thanksgiving this week you can look around at your immediate family you can look around at the people that you share with whether it's over zoom or uh, in person i hope you can look at that person and say i am so thankful for you I hope when you hold hands at the dinner table, thanking God for the meal that's in front of you, we can remember that our hope and our joy lies in what Christ has done for us. Let us continue to be thankful for the relationship that we have with God and that God will never leave us or abandon us. And God is always with us. Amen. Despite 2020 being a hard year for many of us, I believe Keolumana UMC has much to be thankful for. Even though we've had to close our church doors, like many churches around the world, we've learned what it means to actually be a church. We learned what really matters. It's our relationship, our connections, and most of all, our faith in Jesus Christ. Let's take a look at what we're thankful for. <laughs> oh, that's make me sleep. I, I, yeah, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I'm thankful for houses because without houses, if it was raining, it would be like all oh, rain would be on us. It would be also being wet for shelter. Uh, I am thankful for my artistic ways. I am thankful for my family because they take care of me. 
I'm thinking for my family and friends. Thank you for my friends. Thank you for your family. What do you mean, friends? I'm just thankful that we got to enjoy ourselves tonight and learn something for Sunday school. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Three cheese. There are so many things that I'm thankful for, but just to name a few, I am thankful for family and friends, people who are so loving, giving of themselves, and dependable through the thick and the thin. I'm also so thankful that we live here in Hawaii. You know, growing up here as a little kid, um, you don't realize all the little things that make Hawaii so special, such as the strong family connection, um, the amazing food, and where you ate those foods, and uh, really just the natural beauty of the islands. Um, so as the saying goes, lucky we live Hawaii. I'm also thankful to technology, even though I'm terrible at it, but I'm thankful to technology because um, it's our lifeline and it has been our lifeline to keep us connected, whether it's through prayer, talk story sessions, or meetings. So um, although it has been a challenge, I'm thankful to technology. Uh, have a happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Take care of yourselves. I'm thankful for my turtle. I love my dog. My dog always don't let me play school. And I'm thankful that I don't have to eat turkey this year. All right. <laughs> Achieving. Now we will have a time of communion. If you can go grab some bread and juice or whatever works for you and your household, you could do so now. I have my little communion cup with me. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come to you on this Thanksgiving Sunday, and we thank you for all that you've blessed us with. Even though this has been a hard year, we know that you have not forgotten us or forsaken us. May your presence come now, fill our homes wherever we may be watching, and I pray that we would be connected with you through your communion table. We thank you for the sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Piula at Wesley United Methodist Church used to always say, we come to church dismembered. We are all carrying our own burdens and we may be thinking about different things, but when we come to the table of thanksgiving, we are remembered, we are made whole, we are made as one. On the night that Christ died, he broke bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and gave it to his disciples. And he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of my covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering to us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with all the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing of the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing of the blood of Christ.
Let us pray. Eternal God, we give thanks to you for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give yourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We have some quick announcements. If you have not picked up a Zoom Sunday School school box, please come do so. You could just call or text me and we can arrange a time for you to pick it up. And then we could schedule a time where we could have a synchronous Sunday School. We plan to have uh, another one in the beginning of December and then I'm gonna roll out a new school box in the middle of December and we're gonna have another one uh, at the end of December. So please make arrangements of, to pick up a school box so we can have a fun Sunday School time over Zoom. Also, if you, have, uh, if you still have cans, we plan to bring the cans over to the Woodward Community College uh, maybe sometime next week. Uh, please drop it off at my office between 10 to 4 next Saturday, or you can arrange a time during the week to drop them off. It's not too late. This uh, Christmas, we're going to do something a little bit different. We are going to uh, raise funds to give gifts for the children of Family Promise. As we know, Family Promise is a great organization that houses shelterless families. Unfortunately, their keiki uh, would not be able to enjoy uh, presents like uh, other kids. So we are going to raise funds. They sent out a list of age appropriate gifts for the kids that are currently in their program. And we picked the best gifts, I believe, uh, from each category. And uh, if you would like to contribute, each of the gifts are between 15 to $25. They're, they're not too much. And uh, I sent out an e-newsletter with all the different gifts that we are planning to contribute to this gift drive. If you would like to make a donation, please do so. You could write a check or in PayPal, you could just write um, Family Promise Gift Drive in the memo and we, we, we will know it's directed to that. If you would like to give a specific uh, offering for a specific gift like uh, the soccer ball or the leapfrog puppy or the Crayola light board, whatever it is, if you could write that on the memo, we'll make sure that that amount will go to that present. And that way we can contribute and really help out the Kiki on our island. We're all about helping our neighbor and helping the people that are here. Today, uh, at one o'clock, we're gonna get together, we're gonna eat our lunch, and then we're also gonna play bingo. I sent out bingo cards yesterday, so if you have not received them, please check your email, uh, print them out, and I recommend um, cutting them and shuffling, shuffling them so we, we're all using different cards. Uh, we're gonna have a really fun time of bingo, and we're gonna play some games. So please join us for that. And I hope everyone has an amazing Thanksgiving As you know, we are not meeting in person, but the church is not closed. Please, if you feel led, please send your offering through PayPal or please write a check to the church. We appreciate all your offerings as they go to continue God's work, God's kingdom work through this church, Keolomana UMC. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.